welcome to Concord Student Service, where we transform students to transform the culture. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us on today. We want to invite you back to worship with us every Sunday, except third Sundays, at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Also, come out for Rec Wednesdays. We're here every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. with food, fun, fellowship, and faith building. So we'd love to see your face in the place. Stay connected with us. Follow us on Instagram at Concord Dallas Students. You can always double check the YouTube links at Concord Dallas Students 1305. We love you. God loves you even more. Let's get into service. Chill, 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 chill. Turn me up, CSA. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, as you guys are coming in, everybody come in. For those that are in the building, in the place, it's super good to see you guys. I know it's early, but if y'all would help me by waking up, if y'all would help me by rising up, if y'all would help me by understanding that since you showed up, you need to show out. If you're okay with, uh, if you know who God is, can you give him some praise on today? He still got donuts on his hands. Can you praise God on today? Come on, everybody. Can y'all help me praise God on today? Well, listen. Listen, I'm super excited to see you all today. I know it's early. I know it's early, but I'm, I'm super glad to see y'all. And I want to welcome y'all into service. We're getting ready to get started. Uh, got a special guest in the building for us on today. So I'm praying that you all are excited for the word and that you're excited to learn what God is saying to his people through his word. Um, but before we get into that, let's go to the word of the Lord on today, right? So if everybody stand on your feet, if you will turn with me to your, in your Bibles to Matthew 25, right? We'll look at verses 42 through 45, right? Because we're still in our, our theme, in our, in our sermon series, and it was good, right? We're talking about the importance of the goodness of God and how we need to reflect that goodness in our actions and our interactions with other people. Right? So let's read Matthew 25, 42 through 45. Matter of fact, if you can put it on the screen uh, upstairs, let's read it together, actually. So it should be, there's two slides, right? Perfect. All right, so if you guys are, if you guys are okay, let's read on the count of three, right? One, two, three. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice. Thank you for the opportunity to gather. Thank you for the opportunity to enter into this, your house, this, your place, this, your sanctuary. So we invite you in on today, oh God. We ask that you will meet us on today, oh God. We're asking that you will pour out your spirit. We're asking that you will dwell in us richly. We're praying that we will be blessed and that you will be glorified both now and ever in Jesus' name. If you believe that, clap your hands and say amen. If you believe that, clap your hands and say amen. Amen, amen. While you guys are on your feet, if you're, if you're not too mean, I want you to go and say hi to five people that you haven't said hi to today. Come on, somebody. Go and say hi to five people. Tell them good morning. Tell them it's good to see you. Come on, everybody. Five people. That's one person. Come on. Come on. You can count. There's two. Then there's three. Then there's four. Then you make it to five. Come on this side. Say hi to somebody. Come on. Come on. Get out your seats. Get out your seats. Tell them good morning. Tell them buenos dias. Tell them guten morgen. Good to see you. Good to see you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, listen, thank you all for joining us again on today. We're getting ready to go into praise and worship. And so at this time, I'll invite the praise team so we can go further in the service of the Lord. Amen.
testing. Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Y'all awake? It don't look like it. <laughs> well, as we get ready for worship, um, I just wanted to ask y'all to come up closer, like out of your seats. Worship is very intimate. It's a very intimate thing. Um, and as sisters and brothers in Christ, why not worship together? Come on. Don't be scared. It's all right. How many of you know that we are never alone? That we don't have to feel lonely? We're never forgotten? God loves every single one of us individually. And he made us individually in our own way. And we're perfect in his image. Amen. You all ready to worship? Okay. Y'all clap it up. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. He knows my name. Y'all clap it up. Hey. Y'all sing that right there. Sing, I am not forgotten.
forgotten because God knows our name. And in that case, we're never lost. Because in him, we can trust. We can trust in him and know that he's there for us and that he cares for us because he's our father. And he loves us so much. Again, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And our names are written in the palm of his hand. Amen. may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word. Oh. So when listen to the sound of power on my lips, Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost a battle. And who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow? Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. And he never will. He is my faithful father. He is my faith. Calling me out. Calling me out. Of and I cannot whisper away. I cannot whisper away what you said in the light. He is my firm Never lost a battle, 
sing our great defender, our great defender, our strong tower, our strong tower. He has never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. no one like you, Lord. You reign on the throne. You sit high and you look low. You're so holy, Lord. You're so worthy. Mm. You're the king. just want to be with you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God, and every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would? Just want to be with you. 
just want to be with you, Lord. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Sing yes, the world. Yes, the world. We'll bow down and we'll say. Bow down and say you are God. And every man. Every man. We'll bow down and we'll say. Bow down and say you are King. So let's start. Presence, I'll dance in your presence. Sing hallelujah. 
just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. That's right. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody clap your hands on this morning for worship like that. Amen. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we would be remiss not to give him glory in this place. Can somebody just give Jesus a hallelujah on this morning? Can somebody give Jesus the highest praise on this morning? Can somebody admit that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending? He's the reason you woke up this morning, and he's the reason that you started on your way. He's the reason that you are flourishing in your life. He's the reason why you can keep going. He is Jesus, King of glory. Ha. Feel, 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 feel this place. It will. We'll sing hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. My God. Um, it's worship like that that makes preaching easy. Amen. I am, I am so blessed um, to the praise team this morning. Thank you all so very much. Can you all give them a hand for the worship that was poured out? Um, outstanding. Um, my name is... Reverend Rashid Russell, um, I, I like to just go by Rashid Russell, amen, um, because that's my government name, all right, um, and I'm here this morning to be able to share with you all, I was invited to come preach, uh, I want to make sure that I take care of protocol, uh, so to uh, the newly installed Family Life Pastor, Pastor Kimberly Briggs, can we put our hands together for her, uh, she threw my name in the bucket uh, to be able to come and share with you all on this morning, uh, to my brother, and he is a, uh, a, a masterful preacher, uh, his name is uh, Pastor Benny Houston, uh, put your hands together for him, and to Pastor CK in his absence, um, lastly to the senior leadership of this church, to Pastor Brian Carter um, and LC Lady Carter. I'm grateful uh, for this opportunity. Um, like I said before, I'm excited to have this opportunity to speak to you all on this morning for week two of your new series on justice called, And It Was Good. And the magnificent tag that states, God is working with you when you choose to do good work. Amen. Uh, my text for this morning is coming out of the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 24 through 27. Again, that's the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 3, verses 24 through 27. And if you have it, let me know by saying amen. Yes, yeah, see, God, God can't hear that. God can't hear that. Uh, when you have it, if you let me know by saying amen. Amen. And if not, I believe they may put it on the screen. If not, just follow along with me, uh, and I will read the text for you. So my custom um, is uh, I'm going to read the text, and then I will give you my sermonic title, and then we'll pray and walk into the word. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Daniel chapter 3, verses 24 through 27. I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible, and the word reads as thus. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. He answered and said, but I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of the fire had come upon them. This is the word of the Lord. My sermonic title, or the what I would like to tag this text for today, is what would you do? What would you do? Let us pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, God, under the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. God, thanking you for this moment. God, thanking you that you already set it up, God, with wonderful worship, God, that you blessed us, God, uh, uh, in, in, in worship and song, God. And now we're asking that you would bless us with your word, God. I pray that you would touch these young people, God, and, and give them something miraculous uh, on today, that God, something that changes the way that they look at you, God, that changes the way that they operate with you, God, that changes the way they walk inside the earth when they are around their friends and their family and their loved ones, God, now and name of Jesus, God, I pray that as your chosen vessel for this moment, God, uh, that, that, that you would preach through me and preach to me, God, that you would have thine own way in this place. God, we give you all the glory. God, we give you all the honor and we give you all the praise. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. We all said amen. Amen, beloved. Uh, we'll listen to an introduction for this text. Um, how many of you have seen the show, What Would You Do? There's a few of y'all. There's a few of y'all have seen the show. What would you do? Uh, the show is a social experiment uh, format that follows the reactions of passing strangers as they encounter conflict or illegal activity in a public setting. Amen. Uh, but they're unaware uh, that it is all staged and being recorded with hidden cameras. Uh, the show establishes controversial, controversial scenarios and then captures people's reactions, uh, whether they are compelled or, or, or feel pressed to act or simply to mind their own business. Uh, scenarios such as a young man or a young woman being harassed by her manager or a young man using an older woman for her money, uh, a black couple facing blatant racism, uh, a homeless man asking for change at a diner, a teenager facing peer pressure. Like I said, the scenarios are staged, but it asks the question, what would you do? Um, it's a serious question. Uh, uh, in these situations, would you, would you just mind your own business uh, and say or do nothing? Because in today's world, uh, I'm seeing more and more people that won't say anything. Amen. Uh, they don't want to rock the boat. Uh, they're afraid of what may happen or they're scared of receiving backlash uh, for daring to challenge things that they know are wrong. Friends, I believe in our text today that the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to deal with this same question. When it came to King Nebuchadnezzar's decree to bow to his statue, let's look at the text. Uh, for context, I'm going to read for you verses 1 through 7, and then I'm going to jump down to verse 12, and we'll walk into the text. But it says, this it says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the, on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Neb Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather uh, uh, the yes men, uh, or, or the satraps, the, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provisions to of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had, stood, uh, had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Verse 4 says, And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, Trigon, the harp, the bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all of the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music of all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Verse 12 says this, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. I, I remind you of our question on today, what would you do? 
See, one of the best ways uh, when I was in seminary, young people, uh, that, that I've learned uh, to, to, to read and study your Bible is to imagine yourself in the text, uh, to literally see yourself in the story to gain an understanding of what the scene looked like. Amen. Uh, so let, let, let's paint the picture. Uh, imagine a, a, a grand ceremony, and all of us are in here, we've all been invited. It's a, it's a grand ceremony, amen, uh, where, where all the important people with, with, with titles show up, you know, almost like a, a president presidential election. I'm going to stay away from that. Uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar has built for himself a 90-foot high statue, uh, just, just ridiculously massive, uh, and he instructs all those that are present uh, that when the music plays, everybody must fall down and worship the statue. Uh, and the text says that the herald or the announcer, he, he tells everyone that whoever does not fall down and worship, the statue will be thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. My God. So the music plays. Amen. Kind of like they were playing up here. The music, the music plays uh, and everybody falls down. They fall down on their knees to, to, to worship the statue except three men. Except three men. Shadrach, Meshach. And Abednego, uh, some men that the text tells us are called Chaldeans, uh, who were known as astrologers, notice that they aren't bowing, and go and tell the king. Let, 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 let me make that make sense to you. You, you, you know, uh, like, like when, when, when the pastor says, let's, let's bow our heads uh, and, and, and close our eyes and, and, and pray, amen. Uh, and some people at other churches, not this church, but people at other churches, uh, they lift their heads up. Y'all ever seen anybody do that? They, they lift their heads up and they open their eyes and they look around to see who else uh, ain't following directions. No, I, I, I know none of y'all do that. Well, well the Chaldeans, they, they do the same thing, amen, and then they run to go tattle on the Hebrew boys. They, they are jealous of them because the king has given them high positions in the kingdom. My first point today would be this to you. Uh, jealousy can cause others to plot against you. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, have you ever had somebody be jealous of you because of your swag? I, I don't have much swag. Y'all can see it. Don't laugh at me because I'm, I'm sensitive about my stuff. Have you ever had somebody uh, 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 be jealous of you because of your swag or because you're smart and you get good grades or, or because you can sing or, or you can rap or you're good in sports or because God has caused favor to be on your life? Uh, well, then you can identify with these three Hebrew boys. See, they had haters simply because of the favor on their life, somebody. Uh, and that favor caused jealousy. And, and the jealous folks couldn't wait to see them mess up just so they could see them fall. Hmm. Anybody know what that looks like? Uh, so what do you do when the haters want to see you fail? Verse 13, we see that the king gets extremely angry at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they would not bow down uh, to the statue and worship him. So he gives them one more chance to, to, to bow down and, and, and worship his image, and, and, and still, 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 they, they, they refuse. Uh, and, and, and let's look at the, the, the B part uh, of, of verse 15, uh, and, and that's just the second part of it. Uh, but, but it says this, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar says to them, um, but... If you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And listen to the question. He, he asked them, who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Now, 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 beloved, when I say to you on today, what would you do? Look at what they do. Verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God. Uh, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, my goodness, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So King Nebuchadnezzar commands uh, for them to be bound up and thrown into the fiery pit and to make sure that they truly suffer, uh, he orders for the furnace to be heated up seven times hotter than normal. I, I say to you in relation to my second point that serving God will require us to remain faithful even despite the possibility of punishment as we can see in this text, even punishment that could lead to certain death. 
Beloved, I want to say to you on this morning, know this, you don't have to be afraid of doing what's right and be fearful because you're about to be put in a fire situation. Uh, the reason we don't have to be afraid is because we understand from the text that God will be with us in the fire, hallelujah, and that it will not harm us. I want you to understand that there are times in life when our elevation, uh, or, or, or let me say it this way, you and me being upgraded, uh, that comes through God preparing us to be available for use when a fire trial is on the way. Sometimes that preparation comes through us being in the fire. Uh, uh, a lot of times our way up is in the fire. Uh, there are times that we tell the Lord, Lord, I, I want you to use me, and, and you got to be careful when you pray that because sometimes what you're asking or sometimes that prayer can say to God, uh, I'm ready to go into the fire. Uh, 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 I know, I know, I know that, that some of you may say to me, uh, uh, preacher, I've stood up for righteousness and uh, I've tried to make the right decision. Uh, I've been the good one, uh, but people still made fun of me. Uh, 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 I couldn't sit with them at lunch no longer. Uh, they acted like I didn't exist anymore. Uh, they called me names and they started treating me funny. Uh, I, I want you to know this. God is still with you. <sighs> uh, in the moment, it, it may feel like you are in a furnace that's been turned up seven times hotter, but, but we have to stay in faith and remind ourselves of this story that says, when I stand up for the things that God stands up for, I will not be burned. And I will not be harmed. Beloved, know that God is working with you when you choose to do good work. Verses 24 through 27. And I, and I want you to stay with me. I, I literally am almost done. Uh, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. But let's look at verses 24 through 27 real quick as we uh, move towards the ending. Of It says, listen to this. It says, then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors. Now understand those counselors that we're talking about, that's when I first read to you verses 1 through 7. Those are those satraps and those governors and those officials, all these yes men that, are, that, that bow down to the king. Uh, he, he asks them, he, he looks at them, and he declares to them, Did, didn't we cast... Three, once again, see, see yourself in the text. You're in the fire, and, 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 and maybe you went, uh, 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 well, 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 for, for the fellas, you were one of a couple of your homies, right? Like y'all stood up, y'all said, no, nah, we, ain't, we ain't bowing. We ain't, we ain't doing it. And you got to do what you got to do. Or for the ladies, maybe you with some of your homegirls and whatnot, and y'all stood up and you said, you know what, we not bowing. No, 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 we going to stand firm in what God told us to do, and we ain't going nowhere. And, and, and he says to us, counselors, hold on, man. Wasn't it? Wasn't it three people? It was, it was three people uh, 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 that we cast into the, and we, we bound them, we tied them up, and we threw them into the fire. And it says, they answered him, true, O king, you're not wrong. And he answered and said to them, but, but, but I see four. I see four men that, that, are, that are unbound. Wait a minute, he said, we threw them in there, and they were tied up. Now they're sitting in the fire, and, and, and they don't have shackles on no more. How are they sitting in a fire free? Somebody needs to ask that question of yourself. How could somebody be sitting in a fire unbound, and it looks like they're, 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 they're free? And he says, and then the, the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the God. Some people say, scholars, that this may be Jesus. Amen? Possibly an angel. I believe it's Jesus. And it says, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning, fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the, as I told you, what they said was counselors before. They explained it here. The satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. Listen, listen to the detail that the author gives. Uh, just, 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 he wants you to know just how serious it is that when God comes in to deliver you, when God comes in to free you, uh, uh, look at the detail. It says the hair on the heads of their heads was not singed. Uh, 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 their cloaks were not harmed. And no smell of fire had come upon them. Hmm. I will tell you. Beloved, that you can ask anybody that has done great things for God or somebody that God is using in a mighty way and they will tell you that it was in the fire when they saw his glory. Uh, it is there in the fire that God lifted them up. Amen. Uh, you may find yourself in a fire of having to say no to something you know is wrong. 
that your friends want you to do, you may find yourself in the fire of fitting into the culture. But you know it doesn't line up with how God wants you and I to live. Let, let, let me say it this way so maybe y'all will feel me. From where y'all come from, uh, 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 cancel culture. Huh? Cancel culture. Uh, have you ever been in the same space as someone you were trying to cancel? Hmm? Have you ever done some of the same things that get people canceled in private, but now you feel like you have to say something because the culture is telling you to do it? How do you stand up to that? When the culture that is supposed to be keeping people in check is now going the wrong way. How do you stand up and be the change the culture needs to see? Uh, 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 you may find yourself in a fire of, of having to speak up when someone is being bullied or attacked. I, I, I know y'all have seen it because, uh, because, see, y'all might watch Instagram and TikTok, but I used to watch World Star myself. Y'all playing with me like y'all know what World Star is. Y'all know it's people just, people just in fights for no reason. And, and, and what, what do we do? We watch it and people take out their phones and they, I, I'm just saying what I'm saying. How, 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 how do you, do you, do you stand up to someone or once you see someone being bullied or attacked? What do you do when you are seeing something but you're saying nothing? Like, 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 like TikTok or, or, or Instagram reels, right? Uh, uh, have, have you seen anything on there that wasn't right or wasn't good? Did you report it? Hmm. Did you make a comment? Do you watch the videos or do you skip past them? It, it, it's, it's just a question. And you all will know for yourselves what you actually do. But, but I'm just asking you the question, what, what, what do you do? Uh, do, do? Do you skip past them? Because uh, nowadays, uh, and, and I've been doing some research, it seems that uh, if you aren't inclusive and you actually have an opinion, you can get canceled as well. Am I right about it? Hmm. Uh, but what happens when someone's life is destroyed because people canceled them? Would God say cancel them? Mm. Or would he say stand up and give them grace and mercy? Uh, the former Roman emperor, emperor Marcus Aurelius says this. He has a quote that says, you can also commit injustice by doing nothing. Mm. It's heavy. So again, I ask, what do you do? See, some people look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as unusual and extraordinary individuals or, or, or maybe even superheroes because they choose to stand up and not bow in the face of trouble or suffering. Uh, uh, but we must understand that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were ordinary people that walked in a fiery furnace and they were not harmed. They, 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 they were ordinary people that, 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 that saw something wasn't right and they decided to take a stand. Y'all, y'all, come on, come on. Superheroes stand up when they see something is wrong and it needs to be corrected. Uh, c c come on, stay with me. Uh, uh, Superman is also Clark Kent. Right? Uh, Wonder Woman is also known as Diana Prince. Uh, uh, Prince. Uh, Spider Man is also known as Peter Parker. For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, standing with and for God caused him to put his super on their natural, and they became like superheroes walking around in the midst of a fire. I want you to know. You don't have to be class president or head of student council, the most popular person or persons in school. Uh, you don't have to be a sports star to be extraordinary or special, to be able to be used to do the miraculous. Because Jesus is the real hero. And he lives on the inside of you. You all are capable of doing phenomenal things too. If you don't believe me, uh, just look at your Bible. Uh, Samson was a, was a, was a normal boy who, who scholars say, catch this, was probably skinny, like me. Not swole up like we think about it. When we think about Samson, we think he's swollen. Mm, no, nah, that would have been too obvious. Probably skinny. 
Uh, but, but, but the Bible uh, uh, says uh, that the spirit of the Lord would come upon him and he would gain incredible strength, so much so that he killed thousands of Philistines for the Lord. Uh, Moses was a stutterer and, and, and God used him to deliver the Israelites from the land of Egypt. Uh, Abram became Abraham and through obedience became the father of many nations. Uh, in the New Testament, you'll remember a story about a boy with a sack lunch uh, that helped feed 5,000 people people. I want to tell you all that you are world changers. The Holy Spirit of God lives on the inside of you and he wants to use you to flip this world upside down. He wants to use you to help change oppressive systems. You to be the heartbeat and identity of the culture. You to be the voice for the people. You to be the catalyst for change in this cold world that we live in. How many of us, how many of us, how many of us can say amen? Because just when we thought we lost all our friends or, or, or because we're different and we live for God, that people may say we're a follower. I heard there's a term that y'all use. They may say you're a dupe uh, or, or that you're trying too hard or they may even call you an op. Or just when you thought you had messed it all up, God came in and blew the fire out. Uh, you actually came out on the other side and you were no longer hurt or damaged. So the reason why you come to church, uh, the reason why you stand up when you see injustice, the reason why that you live the way that you do is because you have been in the fire. Uh, see, 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 people may get a glimpse of your story, uh, but they can't see the glory that brought you out. Uh, and, and, and let me tell somebody today that a lot of times we need fire to keep us straight. Because without it, we would live any kind of way. We would walk around with unforgiveness in our hearts, mad with people, and, and that's not like Christ. Friends, sometimes God will deliver us from the fire, but he will, he will not deliver us from the fire, but he will deliver us in the fire. Amen. Uh, so, beloved, uh, as, as I go to my seat, uh, I give you these, this charge. Now, now, forgive me, as I told you before, that uh, I'm in seminary, uh, working on a Master's in Divinity degree with a, with a concentration in biblical preaching. So, uh, these are a couple of big words uh, uh, that you can use, you have my permission, y'all can say it was me, uh, uh, to mess with your parents, right? Uh, uh, when they get out of church, uh, you can mess them up and see if they know what they mean. Amen? Y'all mess them up real quick. So here, just stay, stay with me real quick. So, my charge to you is this. Let your orthodoxy match your orthopraxy. Amen? I'm going to say that again. Let your orthodoxy match your, 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 your orthopraxy. So, so let me break that down for you real quick. Orthodoxy is just a real uh, high word for saying what you believe. Uh, scholars say orthodoxy is also known as a right belief, okay? So that's orthodoxy, it's over here. Orthodoxy is what you believe. Over here we have orthopraxy. Orthopraxy uh, uh, is the way you act, amen? So, so I'm saying let the way you believe, what you say you believe about Jesus, what you say you believe as it relates to church, what you say you believe as it relates to being a child of God, what you say you believe, act like it. That, 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 that's the challenge. When I ask you, what would you do? Let your belief match your actions. It's hard for all of us. God is working with you when you choose to do good work. Don't just believe in God and believe in the Bible. Act like it as well. Three things. Be firm in your commitments. Stand by what you say. All without apologizing, be authentic. Never compromise your worship, relationship, and obedience to God for anything or anyone. Three, because you have no idea what God might do through one single act of obedience. Remember, there's a hero living on the inside of you. So what will you do? Amen. And God bless you all. Gracious, y'all might be sick of hearing me by now. Um, that's the question, beloved. What, what, 
would you do? See, um, some of you all come to church. You know how to clap. You know how to sing. Uh, you know how to do the Holy Ghost dance. Somebody know how to do the Holy Ghost. I can't really do it. I can't do it. Uh, some of y'all know how to do the dance. You got all the movements. But you don't know if you really, truly have Christ. So I, I, I offer you the invitation on today. The question to you is, what would you do? See, because each and every one of you that are sitting in those seats in front of me and looking at me, you know in your heart of hearts if you're truly saved. And if you're not sure, if you were going to walk out of this place and something were to happen, God forbid, happen to you, do you know that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to meet the master in heaven and live with him in eternity? And if you don't, what will you do? You know if you've been that person that's seeing something and saying nothing. You know if you're that person that comes to church. And once again, you know the gymnastics of church, but, but you know you've backslidden. You, you, you know you, you're, you're, you're caught up in some stuff. That you, that, that you probably shouldn't be caught up in. This, this ain't about me. It's, it, it's about you and your personal walk with Jesus. If you know that you've backslidden and, and you need to renew your relationship with Jesus Christ, it don't matter who's sitting to your right or your left. This is about you and your soul salvation. If you know you need to say, Father, I need to come back with, to you, my question is, what will you do? If, if, if you know you, 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 you want a church home and, and you call these people your family and your friends and, and you know them and you guys love each other uh, uh, and you know that you want to belong to something a little bit more. Like we all want to belong to different groups and different people types. Uh, we, sometimes we want to belong to the popular kids just because it feels good and makes us feel better. Sometimes we want to belong to the things uh, that other people are doing just so that we don't get called out for being different or strange. But you want real family. Family that loves you. Family uh, that's going to support you and pray for you and be there for you. When you have pastors like Minister Briggs and Pastor Benny and Pastor CK, uh, I can tell you no better place than Concord Church. So if you know you need a church home, I, I ask you on today, what will you do? Stand up, please. Y'all stand up. So if that's a threefold thing, if you know, that it's time, it's time for the fellas, for the ladies. It's time for you to receive Jesus in your heart. You know that you know. What will you do? I invite you to come. If you know uh, there's some things going on uh, that you need to change, and you need to restore your, your relationship with Jesus, what will you do? I invite you to come. If you know that you need a church home and you haven't made that decision yet, what will you do? I invite you to come. Now, I want you all to know one last thing. I, I, I've been a youth pastor and I've been a young adult pastor. And I understand that sometimes um, we feel peer pressure or we feel like I'm not going to be the first person to step on out there, right? It's just preacher, that ain't me. I'm not comfortable in that space. Don't, do, do me a favor. Don't, don't be like the people that I talked about at the beginning of the service uh, uh, that's going to um, open their eyes and see who's praying or who's doing different things. Follow the directions if you don't mind. Would you all bow your heads for me? Close your eyes. I'm just going to ask one more time. If you know you need a relationship with Jesus, not sure what to do, but you know you need to do something. All I'm going to ask is that you would raise your hand. We'll make sure that somebody helps you out in that situation. And if you don't know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and you want to be saved, lift your hand. Amen. If you know you've backslidden or there's some things that you know you need to correct in your life, 
and you're asking me, you're saying, preacher, yeah, I, I, I need to change some stuff. And I need to get back on track because I've, I've lost it a little bit. Would you please just raise your hand? We'll make sure that someone comes and prays with you. And lastly, if you are looking for a church home and you know it's time for you to make that decision, you're scared to step out, would you simply just raise your hand for me? I'll have somebody talk to you as well. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. God, thanking you for your choice. God, when it came to the question, what would you do? God, you went to that cruel cross for us. God, you gave your life for us. God, you shed every ounce of blood in your body for us. God, you took whippings and beatings, God, because you loved us so much, God. So when it came to what you would do, God, you gave up your life as a ransom for many. And we're thankful. God, when we look at what you've done on today, God, when we looked at worship, God, on this morning, God, what did you do? God, you showed up in a miraculous way. God, and you wrapped us with your love and you hugged us, God, and you held us. And you let us know that you were the king of glory. There's no better God. Father, we're grateful that we have the opportunity to be called children of yours, sons and daughters of yours. God, would you help us? to have our belief line up with how we act so that people can see that we are a peculiar people. God, we are called to change the world. God, we are called to be different. God, we are the called out ones, the chosen ones. God, that you want to use to turn this earth around. God, would you do that? God, for every young person in this room on today, God, that has a desire to be saved, God, I pray that you would stir up that fire on the inside of them, God, and that even if they have to go talk to one of the pastors, God, in secret, God, that you would bless them, God, because you said the things that are done in secret, you will bless publicly. Would you do that? God, would you cover all these young people? God, would you bless their lives? God, would you bless their households? God, would you bless them at school? God, would you bless their comings and their goings? God, would you bless the work of their hands? God, would you do exceedingly and abundantly above what they could ask or think? God, would you bless them a hundredfold? God, would you make their testimony, God, that, 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 that their, their, their blessings are running over, God, they're overflowing, God, that they're living out of their saucers because their cups have overflowed? God, would you just keep us? God, would you speak to us? Let us feel more of your presence. Because our delight, God, is in knowing you. Now, God, as we leave your, this place, whenever your presence, know that we love you. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Everyone here has said, amen. Amen, beloved, you, beloved. God bless you and thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and share with you. Amen. Oh, come on, help me thank God for Reverend Rashid. Come on, come on, clap your hands and give God some praise for our good brother, Reverend Rashid. If you know that you're ready to be used by God, won't you give him some praise in this place? Weren't you blessed by that word? Thank you, Brother Rashid, for that reminder that even though we may come under fire, we will not be burned because of the presence of the Lord is with us. Amen. 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 Listen, listen. As we wrap up, as we get ready to be dismissed, just a couple quick announcements for you guys um, upstairs, if you'll follow me. A couple things. You guys know we're here every Wednesday, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., so join us for Rec Wednesdays. Uh, register if you haven't already. You know, we have food, fun, fellowship. We're going to do uh, faith-building activities and help you grow your relationship with Jesus Christ every Wednesday. So come out, come out, come out. Invite a friend, invite two friends, invite three friends. Invite everybody with you, right, and pull up on Wednesday. Also, you know we're mobilizing our third Sunday serve squad, right? So our students will be serving in main service on third Sundays, right? And this upcoming Wednesday is our final orientation for the month of April. So if you are wanting to serve this Sunday, 
this upcoming Sunday in main service, make sure you're here on Wednesday so you can not only get your uniform, but you can get your stations and your arrival times and your expectations, right? So definitely make sure you guys come out on this Wednesday. Um, and then also I want to give you guys the opportunity to give, right? Some of you guys are still bringing me offerings uh, outside of church, but listen, you guys have the opportunity to give uh, prayerfully. The instructions are on the screen, right? You guys can drop it in the offering, box, offering boxes or you guys can go online or you guys can text the code. You can scan the QR, right? So make sure that you guys give God the opportunity to bless you uh, by blessing others. Amen. All right. So last thing is before we get out of here, I'll pronounce this blessing over you guys and then we'll be dismissed. All right. So if you will, raise your right hand. Everybody raise your right hand. Come on, come on, come on. Right, it's from number 6, 24 through 26, and it reads as follows. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen? Amen. You all are dismissed.